who's going to live in that vacation home you just had built? You left one important. You left one important fact out of the equation. You didn't check with him who holds the calendar. You didn't say if it be the Lord's will. You just figured your will was God's will. And how many times have we missed that? That our will, uh, as we think, is not always the will of God. This is why we seek his face for direction. Give us this day our daily bread. What do you mean by bread? Give me this day what it takes for me to walk an upright life. Give me today what it takes for me to deal with whatever may come my way. When we wake up and we pray that prayer, it's all right because we're asking him to give you your daily bread, your spiritual food for today. God, give me whatever it's going to take to get through this day. Uh, you're asking the right person because again it is written that this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it because he knows what is coming up on the day. He knows the unexpected. He knows everything you don't know. And so therefore, he can give you the wisdom and the strength to deal with the unexpected situation. Because you don't know that it's coming, but he does. But he can prepare you for that that you don't know because he knows all things. And this is why he says that when you pray, you give him glory and then you ask him. And then the scripture says, commit your works unto the Lord and he will establish your thoughts. All your planning and all your work, give it into the hands of God. And say, God, what do you think about this? And he would even, if it's of his will, he would show you how to think. He will, he will construct your mind in a proper way. He will feed to you the right information, lead and guide you in the right direction so that you can know how to think and establish a way that you may accomplish these things. But you need to be careful when your intentions blind you. And that's what I'm going to talk about. When our own intentions blind us. If I can say blinded intentions. You can get, and I'm not going to be before you long, but I'm just going to be, what is that word that begins with an R and ends with an L? Real. As the young people say, keep it 1,000. I'm going to keep it 1,000. Or is it 100? 100. Okay. <laughs> We're going to keep it 1,000. <laughs> that comes from the natural realm to the spirit. Okay. But that way you think I'm bishop. A bishop keeps it 1,000. That's what ministers do. They keep it 1,000. The rest of us keep it 100. Okay. okay. It ain't 1,000. All right. I was trying to learn. Well, we're going to keep it 100 times 10. 1,000. Okay. You've got to be careful that your ideals, even your dreams and your visions, are not demonically inspired or not worldly inspired. You have to understand that God created the heaven and the earth, and he gave us a way of thinking by his spirit. And the scripture says to be worldly minded, carnally minded, is to be, is to, to have death. To be worldly minded makes you the enemy of God. And let me explain that. When it means to be worldly minded, it means that if you are constantly thinking the way the majority of people of this world thinks, if you're basing all your goals and your dreams and hopes upon the formulas and the equations that the people of the world have set forth. It's going to lead you away from God because the worldly way of thinking, thinking the way of man, is just the opposite of how God thinks. And this is why the scripture says that if you are worldly minded, you are the enemy of God. Because by following the wisdom and the instructions and the way of the world, it will lead you away from God. Because the systems of this world is against Christ. Why is that? Because the Bible says because of sin and because of demonic spirits, fallen angels and such, 
Satan has become the god of this world, of the cosmos. He's in charge of the order of things. Satan is God's number one enemy. And now, if you are following, if somebody is following and hanging out with your number one enemy, what makes you think your arch enemy is going to put in something good in them concerning you? Do you understand what I'm saying? You see, if you have a friend that hangs around someone that despises you, envy you, as a matter of fact, you know they hate you and they don't mind telling you. And then that friend comes back to you and says, oh, I was with so-and-so. And they had a lot of good things to say about you. What would you think? What would we as humans say? Yeah, right. It doesn't stand to reason. I feel a virtue. So listen to me. Let me be real with you. One thousand here. Make no mistake. When you are trying to make it in this world and you are following the knowledge and the wisdom and the working and, 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 and modeling your life after the way of this world, you need to stop blaspheming and saying God is in it because he's not. God is not in it. Not like you think. The Bible says that through wisdom of this world, man missed God. I'll give you an example. God says he created us male and female. But now the world is changing all of that. You've got, I don't know how many genders now. You have same-sex marriage. You have men changing their identity, the whole body function and women changing the whole body function. See, that's the way of the world. The Bible says pray always, and the, the world comes up with even taking prayer out of schools, taking prayer out of the courtrooms, taking prayer even out of sports, uh, taking prayer out of this, taking prayer. The God says pray, the word says, the world says no. No. The word says trust in God, and he will lead you to be healthy and the world fills us up with drugs that never heal with poison the world says marriage the world says fornication adultery it's all good the word of God says honor thy father and mother and the world says who and what is that What I'm trying to say, the word of God says, present your bodies, your bodies, as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto God. Not just your soul, but present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy. And then the scripture says, don't you know that God does not dwell in buildings, but you, your body is the temple of the almighty God. So then the scripture says our bodies belong to God. And in our bodies we should represent God. But now the world says you can do what you want with your body. You can mark it up. You can walk around half naked. You can drip it out and paint your face up and, and put on idolatry stuff. You can look any kind of way you want to and it's all right. Now you see why we say that whoever is a friend of the world is the enemy of God? Because young people, you hear me? So it seems then that whatever the world teaches, for the most part, it does what young people go against? It goes against God. <clears throat> That's why when you're born again, you come out of the world, meaning you no longer are fashioned after the world. That's why I tell all you young folks, don't be so weak as to follow the crowd. The young men drop their pants like a bunch of sissies, and then you see church boys dropping their pants. No, 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 you don't do that. The world comes up with some crazy hairdo and then you see church folk trying to get crazy. You don't do that. We don't follow the world. We are not conformed to the world. The Bible tells us not to become like them. Why is that? Because this world is not our home. If you, if, listen, if you get caught up in something, put it like this. I, I don't know how many gamers we have here, you know. But if you're a gamer, or put it like this, something you were really trying to do at home, or 
Everybody use your own imagination. You had to go somewhere. Right? Y'all hear me? And either you're watching a TV program, playing a game, looking for something, or doing whatever it is, women and men and women that you're doing. And, and, and you knew the time was getting late, but you had to find what you were doing. You were so caught up in it. You got so caught up in what you were doing until what? You lost track of time, and what happened? You were late. And so you got to come up with an excuse if you had to be somewhere important, you see? Feeling bad. Well, see, when you get caught up in this world, because this world is not designed for you to be ready for the Lord, you can get so caught up in trying to be like this world and have the American dream and, and have all the money and all the liberty to do what the hell you want to do, because that's where it would take you, you understand? And you can get so caught up in it that when the trumpet sounds and the Lord comes, you are so caught up that you forgot and lost track of. You didn't know what time it was. And when you find out that the Lord has come, it's too late. Is that Bible? And God told Noah to build an ark because it was going to rain. They never saw rain before, but for 120 years, this ark was in building. And the Bible says that they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage and building. Sounds like everyday living until the same day when that rain came. Everybody was doing what they wanted. And you can, it's amazing how our own ambitions can blind us. And we say to ourselves, how did I miss this? Because you were too caught up in your own intentions. Now they've never seen a vote before. Not alone, rain. And then animals walking toward this boat without a human guiding them, not attacking anybody. A lot of unusual symptoms and signs. You would have thought that of all those people, somebody would have said, we need to go check this boat out. But they didn't. Something as important as that boat. How important was it? It was a matter of life and death. But they were so caught up because it wasn't in their plan to take a boat ride. They got so caught up in what they were doing that when those rains started coming, suddenly they lost track of time. All their building and their marriage, they were, by, this is what Jesus said, they were building, marrying, giving in marriage, making a life for themselves in a world that's predestined to be destroyed. That's what they say. Don't get caught up in it. Use the world, don't abuse it. You're smart, you're wise, go as far as you can go, but make sure you check with him who holds the calendar to be sure you get his will. And so what happens? The day, the rain started coming down, the same day, everybody wants to rush, but the, the door is closed. And, and, and Noah didn't have the key. It was too late. Could you imagine the hundreds of people that were saying, with their families, let's be real, with their families, just married a new wife, just built a new home, just got through a plow in a new field, just had a new baby, got your family together, and guess what? That's the last you're going to see of them. All you can see is this boat, and you can't get on it. But what can you say? You can blame nobody but who? Because it was always that. Why didn't you see it? You were blinded by your own intentions. All of you human beings that are so right, you're so smart. Maybe you're not as smart as you think you are. You had nothing to do with you being born. Did everybody hear me? But yet we can take so much control of our lives, we got all the answers to the world, and yet we don't even know how we got here or why.
You didn't choose your parents. You open your eyes and there they were. Hope to God it was the right one standing over you. That's why they put the bands on you in the hospital. So I asked a nurse, I said, why do y'all put the bands? And she just whispered. She said, you'd be surprised how many people walk out of here with other people's babies. I said, is that bad? She said, that's mm -hmm. That bad. Now, some of you young people and young adults are saying, well, Bishop, I have life to live, do you? How long do you have to live? Who can tell me definitely how long you've got to live? Have you talked to the calendar maker? And they say, and many of you are business people and you're salesmen. What do you imagine yourself in five years? Well, I don't know what this world has to hold, but if I'm not here, I hope I'll be in glory. I hate to bust your bubble, but any goals you have for this life, you need to regroup and check with Jesus and say if the Lord's will. Don't make this world your prize because it's going to be destroyed. It's going to be destroyed. And there'll be a new heaven and a new earth. So don't destroy your life for a world that's going to perish. Don't get me wrong. You got money, you're smart, you can buy things. Well, you can buy things, but buy things with this in mind, that it ain't from the last. And don't let the things have you, that if you lose them, you straight. Because your treasures are not on things of this earth, but they're things up above. I feel a virtue. Somebody's understanding what I'm saying. In other words, I need y'all to wake up and stop falling out, getting angry, getting ugly. People need to stop hurting each other over these things that are here as though this is all that our life consists of because it is not. There are certain things that are more valuable than what we see, and that's our soul salvation. Yeah, yeah. That's right. The fact that the Lord is coming back, oh, you, you have hurt me, and maybe I want to strike out and take vengeance, but now if I die taking vengeance, I'm going to miss out when he comes and my soul is lost. So the fact that he's coming back will help me to do the right thing. Not because I'm afraid, but because I make a better choice. This world is not my home. And I'm not going to allow this temporary stay here to have me down for eternity. Somebody says, well, I don't believe in heaven and hell. Who cares what you don't believe in? You didn't even bring yourself here. So how are you going to tell us what doesn't exist? You don't know how you got here. Oh. Come on, smart people. We got all the answers. We can tell God how to run his business. You got theologians telling God, trying to, listen, you got all these people with all these degrees trying to break down a scripture that God just brushed into the ear of common day men. They wrote it down. You got all kinds of doctors and theologians trying to break it down, a simple word that shows you the wisdom of God. But you don't want to get so caught up in your way of thinking and how you feel because feelings are wrong sometimes. You ever walk a bunch of, you ever walk past a bunch of people, people start laughing and start thinking funny? Now you all messed up. Your buddy says, what's wrong? And don't folk laughing at me. They don't even know you. But you felt like they were laughing at you. Your feelings may be real to who? But that doesn't mean they're real in reality. Does anybody hear what I'm saying? And what are you angry for? You're getting upset. You're getting upset with this. You're getting upset with that and you make 100,000 mistakes a day. We need to learn to examine ourselves and be real with ourselves. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? Don't play with your own soul. Don't get caught up in your own ego because you don't even have the power to live or die. What I'm trying to say is in the hands of God. You have to learn to include God in your decision making. Read quickly. Second Kings chapter 11. And when Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the seed royal. But Jehosheba, the daughter of King Joram, sister of Ahaziah, took Joash, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him from among the king's sons, which were slain. And they hid him 
even him and his nurse in the bed chamber, bed chamber from Azaliah, so that he was not slain. And he was with her hid in the house of the Lord six years. And Athaliah did reign over the land. In the seventh year, Jehoda sent and fetched the rulers of her hunters with the captains and the guards and brought them to him into the house of the Lord and made a covenant with them and took an oath of them in the house of the Lord and showed them the king's son. And he commanded them, saying, This is the king that ye shall do. And a third part of you that enter it on the Sabbath shall even be keepers of the watch of the king's house. And a third part shall be at the gate of Sir, and a third part at the gate behind the guard, so that ye shall keep the watch of the house, and it be not broken down. And two parts of all you that go forth on the Sabbath, even they shall keep the watch of the house of the Lord about the king. And ye shall compass king round about, every man with his weapons in his hand, and he that cometh within the ranges, let him be slain. And he be he with the king as he goeth out, and as he cometh in. And the captain of the hundreds did according to all the things that Jehoda the priest commanded. And they took every man his men that went were to come in on the Sabbath with them that should go out on the Sabbath and came to Jehoda, Jehoda the priest. And to the captain of the hundreds did the priest give King David spears and shields that were in the temple of the Lord. And the guard stood, every man with his weapons in his hand, round about the king from the right corner of the temple to the left corner of the temple along by the altar and the temple. And he brought forth the king's son and put the crown upon him and gave him a testimony and they made him king and anointed him. And they clapped their hands and said, God, save the king. And when Athaliah heard the noise of the guard and of the people, she came to the people in the temple of the Lord. And when she looked, behold, the king stood by a pillar as a man of was. And the princes and the trumpeters by the king and all the people of the land rejoiced and blew the trumpets. And Athaliah rent her clothes and cried, Treason, treason! But Jehoiada, the priest, commanded the captain of the hundreds, the officer of the host, and said unto him, Have her forth without the ranges. And him that followed her, kill with the sword. For the priest had said, Let her not be slain in the house of the Lord. Now this queen's son was king, but he was wicked, and judgment came upon him, and he lost the throne. Now, there were other family members that could become king. But what his mother did, she went and started killing all the heirs to the throne so that nobody else could take the kingdom. If my son doesn't have it, nobody will. Hmm? If I can't have it, I'm going to make sure you don't. So she began to kill. It's like somebody trying to hide something that's good for you so they get rid of all the evidence that shows that it's good. So she begins to take it into her own hands and kill all of the sons that would become king. But now the mother of one king took her son, one young man, and hid him. She saw what was going on and she took the boy, I believe it was his mother, took the boy and hid it. You got to be careful how you raise your children. You see, because sometimes the things you think they don't take heed to, they do. And genetics is something else, you know. It just so happened that this woman's daddy and mama was King Ahab and Jezebel. King Ahab was a Jewish king, an Israeli king, but he turned, following his wife, he turned into witchcraft and idolatry. So she was brought up in a house where they worshiped Baal. The father belonged to the God of Israel, but the mother was a priestess of Baal. And, and, and it was her mother that tried to kill the great prophet Elijah. So this girl grew up around mighty preachers and wicked people as well. But in her house, her house was divided. Had a little bit of God in there and had a whole lot of devil in there. She leaned toward the devil side. I said, a little bit of God in there and a whole lot of devil. You know, God don't share. He said he can have it. Because as we know the God before him. You understand? 
So now her son is dead. Mm. And her mama kicks in. Her mama's gone too, but she kicks in the genetics. I'm going to kill them all. Oh, the son. She thought she had them all. She slew them all and she began to rule. Because her intentions were, as long as I'm alive, I'm going to save the throne of my son by filling in myself. But this other mother took her child and hid him for fear. How many of us have grown up hiding, hiding ourselves because of the fear of others who have been blinded by their own intentions? You see, when you're blind, are you, are you listening? When you're blind, you cannot 